Hey y'all, Coach Nefai here, talking about the Mark of the Beast and the Feast of Tabernacles. They are related and we're going to find out how in this video. Now, recently in the news, at least in the alternative news, there have been a lot of talk about the coronavirus, COVID-19 and this vaccine and how one if not both may have a connection between the mark of the beast that we hear about over there in the book of Revelation and you know you hear a lot of people talking about how they're not going to take it a lot of people you know who you know say they'll go it alone they're not going to take their chances because of recent news from AstraZeneca on how this uh, potential vaccine that they're working to get onto the market has caused some neurological problems one of the people taking the vaccine reported that they had been affected spiritually I think their words were they've killed God I can no longer feel God my soul is dead well even those who were in a bit of denial about the vaccine being the mark of the beast kind of uh, had to take a second look if you know what I mean well in this video we're going to show you how it is that our father wanted us to protect ourselves from plagues and COVID 19s and pestilences and stuff like that. I mean, we hear about them all in the scripture. We're over here in Matthew and chapter 24 and verse 7, where it's talking about how in the end times, during what's called the beginning of sorrows, there would be pestilences along with earthquakes and famines and that kind of stuff. So one should ask, okay, if our father warned us about these pestilences that were coming, didn't he give us some way to protect ourselves from them? And the answer is yes. When we come over here and look at Zechariah and chapter 14, we see that the plagues are actually a punishment for people who don't keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You see there in verse 19, it says, this shall be the punishment for all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And what it's talking about, it says, OK, first of all, these people won't get any rain. And if you look around the nation, you'll see that a lot of the farmers are talking about droughts that are occurring around the world. Verse 18 says, and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So it's like the rain is a warning. And if those people the dwellers of modern day Egypt don't bother to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, then they will get the play. And you could assume that the opposite is true for those who keep the Feast of Tabernacles won't be harmed by the plague. So you should be understanding the Feast of Tabernacles. However, I understand many people watching this video are going, what is the Feast of Tabernacles? Tabernacles, they call it booths, or you can hear it called Sukkok sometime. This is one of the seven holy convocations that you read about over in Leviticus 23. You see there in verse 2, where our Father, the Creator, is telling Moses to tell us about the Feast of the Lord. And Moses goes on to proclaim these holy convocations these feasts that we call the feast of the Lord now they're not the feast of Moses these feast days were instituted even before Moses were born but it was Moses that gold inscribed that actually wrote them down for us and Leviticus 23 is one place where you can see them all written down in one place well, when you come down to about verse 33 or 34, he starts talking about the feast of the seventh month. The feast that falls on the 15th day of the seventh month is what's called tabernacles. And then he goes on to give details about what this feast day entails. 
Now, I wanted to talk specifically on these few verses on the Feast of Tabernacles because it appears to me as if there are actually two different ways to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. You see right there in verses 35 and 36, he's talking about one way of celebrating tabernacles. And then in verse 37 and 38, he seems to be making a transition kind of summing up all of the feast of the Lord and then when you get to verse 39 he actually starts talking about the feast of the seventh month again he starts talking about tabernacles again and then this time he's talking about some differences than what we saw up there in the previous verses so let's look at these pretty closely and pull out some of the significant differences that we see in those two instructions on what it is that we're supposed to do on that day now both of which start on the 15th day of the seventh month but notice this one down here in verse 39 it says when ye have gathered the fruit of the land so that I believe is what tells us which of these feasts we should be partaking in of course it's talking about spiritual fruit here but many of us watching this video haven't started to gather this spiritual fruit. For some of us, this is actually the first time we've heard of the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, when you look in here in the verse 36, it's talking about how you should make an offering made by fire for seven days. But when you look it over in verses 39 and 40, there is no mention of an offering made by fire even though it's talking about the same feast. But notice over here in verse 40, it's talking about bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and bows of thick trees, and the willows of the brook, and how we are to rejoice for seven days. That's not mentioned over here in verses 35 or 36. You see in verse 42, it's actually talking about dwelling in booths for seven days sleeping in a tent for seven days but when it was described up there in verses 36 and 37 there was no mention of sleeping in booths for seven days so I would advise you guys to go in and look at these closely because they seem to be two different ways of celebrating now for those who have been keeping this feast for a long time of course, we'll be doing it the second way it's described, where we'll be rejoicing with tree branches and sleeping in tents for seven days. And I don't want to take anything away from you guys at all. Do not stop doing that if you have made this certain progression in your spiritual walk. I have done this. You do lose blessings when you don't keep this feast day correctly. I'm mainly talking about the individuals who this is the first time they're hearing anything about this only a few days before these events start and they want to participate in the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, they can still too celebrate these feast days. In fact, I celebrated in this manner for almost 20 years before I ever slept in a tent. I must mention, when I did start sleeping in the tent, I received a lot of additional blessings. But for those other 20 years, I believe that my efforts were noticed. But anyway, let's go on. We see over here in Hosea chapter 12 and verse 9 that there is coming a time when everybody is going to be dwelling in tents again. That is prophetic. It's probably pointing to the time after the global earthquake that promises to shake down every idol on the planet. I guess at that time, everybody who's left on the planet will be sleeping in some form of booth or tent or something as we reconstruct these buildings and such. But let me show you something over here in Leviticus 23 as I'm trying to instill the importance of these feast days. You read over here in verse 17 to 23 how it's actually talking about how we are supposed to keep three feasts in a year, which include the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Tabernacles as well as Pentecost. 
Then notice how it goes on to talk about how he would actually send us an angel to help us to get through the tribulation and help to bring us into the promised land. This is who is known as the covenant angel. Look in here, chapter 24 and verse 7 of the book of Exodus. You see, it is what we were reading just a second ago was the book of the covenant. It's also referred to as the book of the law in many places throughout the Bible. Well, when you look over here at Malachi and chapter 4, verse 4, our father is telling us to remember this law. This covenant that was given to Moses on Mount Horeb. And he says that if he does, he will send Elijah, the prophet, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This is that covenant angel that we read about over there in Leviticus 23. So again, this is pointing out the importance of the Feast of Tabernacles. Not only is it necessary for us to have this protection that will help us to survive all of the events that are part of this tribulation and apocalypse. And even to help us to enter what we know as the kingdom of God. But in the meantime, we see that it is actually helping to prevent us from getting the plague. So we won't have to worry about vaccines or coronaviruses and that such. This is our father's way. These are our father's therapeutics. This is what he put here for our protection. This is how we prevent ourselves from getting the plague. So check our channel for some other videos we've been doing on the Feast of Tabernacles. We've been covering this subject for a number of years now, putting out instructional videos. This week-long feast actually starts on October the 2nd in the evening of October the 2nd, the first full day of the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot as some people call it would actually be Saturday October the 3rd and it is lasts for seven days plus there's an eighth day celebration that will end over there on Saturday October the 10th but again check our channel for further instructions. I wanted to keep this video short so if you got something out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button if you have any further questions for me please feel free to add them down there in the comment section I'll probably have a video on the subject if not I may even create one based on your comment and may our father bless you and keep you may our father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.